topic, I talk something to do with statistics. So, we'll be touching a little bit about um, uh, the way, the style of language, the way uh, different food use, uses uh, or use language. So, be careful as we'll be uh, looking at such utterances. Now, the first utterance reads, Donald Trump asks five top officials, my dear students, where do you expect to find uh, such utterance? Is it possible such utterance to find it um, uh, maybe in the, in the church? Is it possible to find such utterance um, maybe um, in the uh, bus stop? Now, obvious, you say no. One is expected to find this particular uh, utterance in the field of journalism. Or oh, one would say, one is expected to find um, this particular utterance in the headline of newspaper that the news reporter is telling the public an action that has been taken by Donald Trump. So a journalist or a news reporter is now um, informing the public is putting such utterance in the headline in the newspaper that Donald Trump has fired or has sacked five top officials. Now, why have you come uh, to arrive to such a response that um, one is expected to find this in the headlines of the newspaper? Or one uh, is expected to find this utterance in the headline of um, television. All these are areas, are possible areas where one can find this particular utterance. Now, my dear students, remember the news reporters tend to employ a simple present tense when reporting their uh, news. And that's why here the word access, this verb here, belongs to simple present tense. And the news reporters tend to, or prefer to use simple present tense in order to make such news more alive, more update, so that the readers or the viewers, when reading such particular uh, utterance, motivate them that they are reading something which is active or something which is um, update. Now think if the news reporter is to use past tense, in the headlines, like saying, Donald Trump asked five top officials, or will X. Now, it has used this um, particular simple present tense to make such news um, more updated, updated, and more alive. Dear students, now let's just move to another utterance. And our utterance reads, For the glory, honor, and praise are yours. Now, where do you expect to find such utterance? Now, be careful of the words. Go um, uh, read the words like glory, honor, praise. By reading such a words will guide you. I will, uh, will help you to tell where such a uh, word one is expected to find. Now, one is expected to find um, such utterance in uh, the religion or religious field, one is expected to find these words during preaching or present worship sessions where the worshippers or the followers of the, uh, of the given um, religion or denomination are praising their God, that God is the one who deserves all these, deserves glory, deserves honor, deserve praise. So, um, uh, with such words, a said area, one is capable to tell. Such a words is very hard to find, uh, to find them maybe um, uh, in the biology book or in the geography book. If one is to, uh, to find such a word in biology or in geography, that would be so weird. Unless maybe one is quoting, but again, these such a, such a words or such utterances are pretty much found in um, 
religion. Dear students, let us move to another utterance. You are watching Darasa Online. Here we come. The author portrays corrupt leaders in African societies. Now, before uh, giving a response, now think of, uh, of the words used in, that, in, the, in the given utterance. Think of the word author. Think of the word portrays. Now, other words may, may sound very ordinary, but there are some technical words here in this particular utterance which may guide you to come up, to come up with the right response. Now, ask yourself, where one is expected to find this particular word? Author. The word portrays. So, you uh, again agree with me that uh, one is expected to find, this, uh, to find this particular utterance in uh, literary works. The literary artists have their own technical terms, their own jargons. If one is to write here instead of author, if one is to write the word writer, This word writer here is very common, it's very ordinary, but the literary artist, they call author as a person who writes novels or composes novels or short story. So with the presence of this word now guides you to tell that um, uh, the, the place where one expects to hear such utterance is uh, in a literary work. Let us move to another uh, expression or utterance. Now, here we go. Your Majesty, my client denies all the accusations made against him. I said earlier, my dear students, that um, the correct response, you'll be able to tell the correct response by going through, um, through the words used in that particular utterance. Now here, look at the word majesty, where one is expected to find such a word majesty. Now look at this phrase, my, uh, my client denies all the accusations. Look at this phrase, the, my client denies all the accusations. Now, you agree with me that um, a, a person is expected to find uh, this particular utterance in the court of law or in the field of law. And these words might be given out by an advocate. He's telling um, the, the judge or the magistrate that his client denies all the accusations. Or it's a special way of addressing a judge by uh, using such a title, your majesty. They may use the word your lordship. Again, they may use your excellence. All these are the formal way of addressing uh, the judge. So obvious, uh, one is expected to find this particular utterance at the court of law. So, um, let's just move again, my dear students, to another uh, expression. You are watching Darasa Online. Here we come. Moses cleared the ball away from the goal. My dear students, the same formula. Look at the words, the word go. Moses is just a name of a, of a person. But this Moses cleared the ball away from the goal. Now, where do we expect? I know uh, for the uh, soccer fans, uh, you quickly tell um, this particular utterance where one can find this particular utterance. So, I believe um, um, you agree with me that uh, one expects to find this particular utterance in soccer field or in the sports arena where the comment commentator is um, commenting about the, the soccer match which is going on. So, the commentator may be on the field live doing his job 
seeing Moses carrying the ball away from the goal. The commentators tend to use the so-called spontaneous language because uh, the commentator is on the, uh, on the field commenting uh, acts or the situation going on in the field. So, my dear students, um, let's just move again to another utterance. Here are the other utterances. I know, as I said earlier, that each field, each discipline, has its own uh, special professional uh, terms. Now, look at this one. Don't ask for a car. Ask for a Porsche car. Now, uh, again, um, look at this word. Don't ask for a car. Ask for a Porsche car. Where one can I come across with this particular utterance? Again, you agree with me. That uh, a person, a, one is expected to find this in adverts or advertisement. One is expected uh, to find this in the, um, in the newspaper or in the, on the television. One is advertising uh, the car. Now, is convincing the client that they should stop uh, asking themselves about a car. They should always think of um, buying or owning a Porsche car which is very expensive, very comfortable, like Sharia's car, my dear students. So one is expected to find this language in, uh, uh, in advancement, where this product, a Porsche car, is being ad advertised that people, uh, the public, should uh, go and buy uh, such car and not other cars. So uh, it's convincing the public Dear students, let us again go to another. Mind your heard. Now, where do you expect to find such utterance? Again, you'll agree with me that one is expected um, to find this uh, particular utterance. For example, uh, in the field of, or in, the, in, uh, in uh, uh, public cars, like in the bus, and it's written on the, uh, maybe uh, on the door, as people steps in or embark, embark in, there is su such a word, mind your head. It's a warning. It gives people a warning that, that be careful and embark into a car. But again, one may see this particular um, uh, utterance in the public buildings, in a hotel building, where um, maybe there are steps. So it, it warns the, the, uh, the people especially those who are tall enough, that they may hit their head. So it, it, there's a warning somewhere they are written, um, mind your head. Look here, my, my dear students. Belt on. Again, uh, one may see this um, um, in the missile transport. People are being warned or are, are, are being reminded that whenever you embark into a car, you have to put a belt on. Or maybe in the fright, the cabin crew is uh, reminding the passengers in the fright that they should put on the belt. That before, or the driver has to put on the, on the belt before starting driving. Now, back to you. Have you ever seen this uh, particular utterance? Obviously, yes. Dear students, here again is our uh, expression, take beaker. It starts with take beaker, add water, add one drop of sulfuric acid, shake, and then observe. Where do you expect to find such particular utterance? Where it starts by commanding. It starts by commanding verbs like take Add, add, shake, observe. Where do you expect to find that particular? Now, you'll be able again to tell um, that one is expected to find this particular utterance in the lab or laboratory where the lab technician or attendant is giving an instruction to the students 
Maybe they are, they, they are about to perform. Now for them to, uh, to perform such an uh, experiment, they have to undergo some steps, some procedures. Now here are the procedures. That the first procedure is to take a beaker, add water, add one drop of sulfuric acid, shake, and then observe. So it's pure instructional kind of language where it is, make, it is, it is expected to, uh, to be found in laboratory. I believe when you are in Form 3 or in Form 2 something, you heard such a language from a lab or from a chemistry teacher or biology teacher instructing you on how to perform something by steps. My dear students, let us now go to our second question. Before going to our second question, let us have a, a short break. Then, we'll come back. Stay tuned. You are watching Darasa Online. Dear students, welcome back to our second session. Now, our question reads, describe graphological features of language of advancement. Use five points. Now, my students, the word describe should be well understood. To describe means giving details on how something looks like, that you are giving features that explains how something looks like. But again, you should be very careful, we should also under understand the word graphology or graphological features. Now leave alone the word features. Think of uh, gra graphology or graphological, remember, markers of style. And I believe um, you have studied the, uh, all those uh, styles or mark of style. Mark of style with your teachers. So leave alone other markers of styles. Now confine yourself to this particular um, style or marker. Now with the word uh, 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 graphological or graphology is the way something is written. Or presented, let me come back. I'm saying the word graphology means the way something is being presented or something is being written or printed. Now, there are so many ways of, um, of writing things, there are so many ways of printing some things. Now, here you are, you are asked to tell about graphological features. In the field of advancement, and not otherwise. So again, continue confining yourself to this particular field of advancement, and not otherwise. Remember, each field, each discipline, has its own style of writing or printing, which is different from the way um, uh, other style. Let's say. Uh, the field of advancement, the way it, uh, the, it's, graphologi it's graphological is different from the field of biology, the field of geography, the field of, ma of mathematics. Now, if I'm to ask you, what are those are the graphological features? I believe you will be able to tell. So the question, just want you uh, to use only five points. Now, before going to, um, uh, to the description, let us look at this particular advert. It's a Global Education Link Limited, an agency of overseas education. Back to the question. It says, describe the graphological features of language of advancement. And here is our Advert. It's a global 
Education Link Limited, an agency of overseas education. Now, describe this advert, my dear students. Look at the way this advert has been written. Look at the words. Look at the, the way the, the words have been designed. Look one letter after the other. Look at the letter G. Then comes to the next. Then look at the letter R. Then comes to B, A, and L. Now, is this the same way, the same as um, doing like this? It's obvious, no. The way this particular advert has been written is quite different from this particular, uh, the way it has been scribbled here. Now, look at the colors in this particular advert. Look at the, uh, um, the boarding. The words, the words have been boarded. The letters are, are so thick. Uh, think ink has been used to make this uh, word or letters appear more clearer. But again, it, this particular word or adverts, it has some different colors. Look at this color here and this one here. Over here, if I'm to ask you how many colors are found in this particular adverts. So this Global Education Link Limited advertises its services to the public. It wants the public to use this particular link or to use this, this particular frame to access overseas education. But the way it appears, or graphologically, it has used um, uh, capital letters. It has used colors. The letters are bordered. Look at the picture of the world or earth in this particular O. It has been used technically. It has used abbreviation. The word limited. The word G-E-L. All these are um, tells the way or the way um, uh, something is being printed or something is being written. It's all about graphology. Each style of writing, my dear students, has got its uh, own reason. So, as you come across with different adverts, the printed ones, be able to think that why did they uh, decide to put the capital letters? Why did they decide to board the, the letters are bordered? Why did they use different colors? Why do they use um, uh, these abbreviations or acronyms? There's a use of acronyms here. EGL and the word uh, this um, LTD, limited. That's all about graphology. The way something is being written or printed. It's all about graphology. My dear students, just again, look another picture. Look at the word Global Education Link. Now, it advertises uh, the services that it offers. And here is a career which is being advertised. The people or the clients should opt for this career. Now, look at the capital letters which have are, which are been used in this particular um, advert. Look at the colors. If I'm to ask you how many colors you uh, are um, found in these particular adverts, you'll be able to tell. The, the use of picture of a human being. Now, each style or each technique used in this particular uh, adverts has a reason, has a purpose. And don't take for granted. The one who prepares these particular adverts wants to capture the, uh, the eyes of the viewers. If the heading here or the heading here would have been written in a small letter, people won't be, uh, won't be able to look at it or to view. But again, uh, the heading is in capital letter. It has colors or it has been colored. 
and not a single color. There are, uh, there are two different colors. The word career, right here, it is in capital letters. And it has been colored. But again, it is bordered. All these have been done, have been performed with a reason. Subheading, it says uh, in health, cardiovascular technology. Again, comes to uh, the picture of a heart. And down here, it, it tells, for more information, you may visit, to, uh, visit this page. Facebook page, Instagram page, Twitter. Again, you may uh, call this particular number for further information about this career. Now, my dear students, having seen uh, the two pictures here, the first one, this one, and the next one right here. Now, back to the question. It says now, describe the graphological features of the language of advancement. Just use only five points. So, this is uh, our, our adverts, which are uh, graphologically printed, which again, uh, it has pictures, a picture of a human being, a picture of a heart. It has uh, capital letters. It has used colors, different colors. It has some head, uh, subheading or headline. It is bordered, etc. Now, describe um, uh, graphologically now. So you'll be able now to tell that um, these particular graphological features of language of advancements includes it has heading or uh, headline or headings and normally the, he the, head the heading is written in capital letters as you have seen um, in, the, in, the, in the two pictures or in the two adverts but again boarding it has been described by having this um, uh, by, uh, by being boarded the letters are thick, have been boarded. Why boarding? In order to capture the eyes of the viewers or the eyes of the public. But again, capitalization, or oh, I mean colors. Students, you have seen different colors used in such um, adverts. I've displayed for you. Or oh, I displayed, um, I displayed in some few minutes back. But again, um, capitalization. Look at those letters. The headline were capitalized. But again, use of pictures and sometimes uh, diagrams. In some cases, even graphs they are being used. The pictures also captures your eyes. Again, uh, the paragraphs, they are so clear. The language of adverts or advert advertisement tends to use very clear paragraphs. And the paragraphs are very short, like two or three lines. My dear students, remember, an advert must be very short. A long uh, ad uh, advert or advertisement bores the public. People need very few information about your service. People need a um, uh, few words to tell about your product or your service you are offering. Don't pump as, or as you prepare your adverts or your ad advertisement. Don't pump people with so much information. People are in a hurry. They just need only a few information. Very brief one. Very short. And there below, put your contact address. People, th those people who will be interested, or the customers who will be interested, will give you a phone call. Or will visit your website. Or will visit your, um, um, your Facebook page, or Instagram, or Twitter, etc. That's why um, an advert 
is normally short, very short. Having that said, I believe now, you are able now to, uh, to prepare your own advancement, including um, uh, all those features. You are now able to prepare your advertisement and write all uh, graphologically, include all the graphological features. My dear students, I'm now convinced that you are able now to tell the graph graphological features of language of advertisement, of language of adver uh, advertisement. But again, if you are told or if you are asked to prepare your own advancement or prepare your own adverts telling people about your service you are offering let's say you are you are owning a school so you are told now to prepare an ad advancement to tell the public the subjects that we are teaching or the services we are offering and convincing customers to come to your school now, you are told to prepare your advancement. Now, graphologically, how are you going to do that? So, be now ready to come across with such a question to prepare your own adverts, including all those graphological features. Like, um, head, uh, headings, boarding, use of colors, use of uh, capital letters or capitalization, use of pictures or diagrams or gloves, use of clear paragraphs, etc. Use of um, acronyms like the one we have seen from this one. Global Education Link Limited. Now you can ask yourself, why this uh, word has been shortened. Now, this is very common. The use of abbreviation in language of advancement is very common. It saves space. By saving space, now, um, it, uh, it uses, again, very few words to avoid boredom to the public. If such a word would be written like uh, education link limited, that would be very long. So the, the, uh, the one who composed this has made this very much short. Dear students, let us continue with our subject. Here is, um, will be your assignment. Go and study about other markers of style. For example, remember we were dealing with uh, graphological features. Now, um, the question may, be, may, may, may come into different um, uh, phrases or may, may, may be asked in a different way. You may be told to describe the sy syntactical features of language of advancement. This Syntactical features of language of My dear students, now here is your question, of which you may uh, do, it, do it at your own pace, that describe the, the syntactical features of language of advert, um, advancement. Now, you should be very clear 
with this particular word syntactical in some books they prefer to use a uh, grammatical grammatical features of language of uh, advancement but again not necessarily being a uh, language of advancement one may, uh, you may be even taught you may be asked for example language of of law or religious language religious language or ICT language so each field you may be you may be asked from different disciplines or field but remember focus on syntactical features now we should know all the syntactical features or grammatical features you will be so surprised seeing a student instead of giving uh, or describing syntactical features then we see some graphological features there again will be wrong do you remember the syntactical features of language of advancement i believe uh, you are aware now go through this question uh, then i believe you will be okay dear students this mark the end of our meeting today thanks so much for your attention till next time thank you bye Elimu, Sayansi na Teknolojia pamoja na ofisi ya Rais Tamisemi kupitia baraza la mitiani Tanzania Nectar chama cha walimu Tanzania CWT na wakala wa vyuo vikuu nje ya nchi Global Education League ikishirikiana na shirika la utangazaji Tanzania TBC kupitia chaneli yake TBC2 wanakuletea kipindi cha darasa online kila Jumatatu hadi Ijumaa saa 4 asubuhi hadi saa 9 la asiri kama mwanafunzi una maswali au maoni wasiliana nasi kupitia